Good evening. Tonight, we welcome you back to Lena and John's Really Rock and Reading, where we have kind of a kooky looking setup. John, yeah, it's kind of spooky, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Look at this. We're spooky. Yeah. <clears throat> Real spooky. We got uh, all kinds of things going. The crucifix is not showing. All right. There we go. Welcome. Welcome, our guests this evening. Uh, Edie. And Edie Beal of Grey Gardens. Yes, that's correct. Thank you very much, Mother. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, do you still call her Mother? You call Big Edie Mother? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, Lena, I wanted to be very clear tonight about what we're here to talk about. Um, and I, I, I'm taking all the pressure. This is little Edie talking. And Edie, you know I'm crazy about you. And I like your mom too. <laughs> we'll go into that in a moment. But first, let's talk about those marvelous Maisels. Yes, the Maisel brothers. Um, we'll just show this very quickly. Um, the Maisel brothers did two major, they did many documentaries, but they did two major documentaries uh, when they worked as filmmakers together. One being The Beatles Coming to America. If you haven't seen that, please get a copy of that and watch it. Mm -hmm. Because it really captures the boys in a way that no one else really ever did. Not even Hard Day's Night. It's like the real Hard Day's Night. Yeah, the one you need to say. Yeah, exactly. Perfect, Lena. Thank you. And uh, Grey Gardens, the story of these two women... And we won't go into their history too much. Uh, they have uh, their 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 uh, le they were lesser known relatives of the Kennedy clan, uh, the presidential Kennedy clan. You can find out anything you need to know about the Beale mother and daughter, Big Edie and Little Edie, anywhere you look online. But the Maisel brothers did two documentaries of really importance in our century. And they were these two documentaries, The Beatles and, you know, separately, but then the, and the Beatles uh, family. And uh, here, I, very, very quickly, um, they capture the human spirit in different ways, different spectrums of the human spirit that somehow touched everyone who saw these films in a very specific way. So, Edie, mm -hmm. we're talking mother-daughter relationships. Right, okay. So, uh, this is actually the Edie that I see when I see her. Mm. This, when she comes through, this is Edie that speaks to me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely gorgeous young woman. Uh, very promising life ahead of her, ended up dedicating her, uh, listen to the horn outside, many years being, would you say you were dominated by Big Edie, by your mother? I would say, well, mother, uh, do you feel that you dominated me? I, yes, I was... I behaved inappropriate, inappropriately toward my daughter. Mm -hmm. In what sense? I was very jealous of her, and I was possessive of the life she had in front of her, and I was had a lot of regrets about my own life, and I behaved uh, maniacally at times, and she was a very soft-hearted individual, uh, despite her headstrong tendencies. And I knew how to play on her sympathies, and I also knew how to play on her insecurities, and I wrecked havoc in her uh, psychological life for many years. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a big admission for her to make. Mm -hmm. But I think everyone could see that that happened in, if they look at the film. Well, you know, it's one of those things. I really have myself to blame. Mm -hmm. I have my, myself to blame. Uh, we all have our own path, and it's how we choose to run it. And um, I became insecure, and running back to mommy seemed like a safe place. 
And before I realized it, I was stuck there and ensconced there. And after a certain amount of years, there just didn't seem to be any way out. Mm-hmm. Now, Edie and Big Edie. Mm-hmm. When I saw your movie, I really felt um, that in many ways it mirrored my relationship with my biological mother, except that I was, I think I, I, I was a stronger person and I broke away very young and I never, never went back. Right. Yes, that's true. But you still, Lena, no offense, mm -hmm. you still allowed her to do a lot of damage psychologically to you, even from a distance. Yes. Let's talk about bipolar disorder because I suffered from it. My mother, Big Edie, definitely suffered from it. And Lena, your mother was a severe case. Let's show that po po picture that you made. All right. Oh, God. This, <laughs> this is what Lena saw. Mm -hmm. And that's what I saw too. That was my mother and Lena's mother growing up. Mm -hmm. Either the first picture, manically, joyously happy, like a little too happy, right? And everything's so much fun that it's unbelievable and great, right? And it could be even uh, the next day or it could be five minutes later. This is what you saw. And she's telling you to go to hell and that you're the worst, ugliest, fattest, stupidest little kid you, she ever saw. And then later on, that's happening again. Mm -hmm. Bipolar disorder. Undiagnosed, untreated, unbelievable. Mm. So you feel that your life with your mother was a mess of bipolar disorder. I absolutely know that that's true. Meanwhile, here's a nice picture of Edie with the marble fawn. <laughs> John laying in bed, right. Mm. Yes, I was taking care of her, but the house was a disgusting mess and we lived in squalor and there was cat shit and cat puke everywhere. And, you know, we tried to make it seem like it was kind of like the, the public fell in love with our fortitude when they saw the Maisel's films. And yet, and yet, and yet. This was what I longed to be. This is what I wanted to be, a star. And I pined for it every single day. And every single day that I was with her, she told me that I was just not star material. Your mother would have done the same thing to you if you let her or gave her half a chance. She did do the same thing to me from the time I was a little kid. Mm. She told me I wasn't pretty enough to be in a play. She she told me not to smile because my teeth were ugly. Mm-hmm. When I liked a haircut that I got, she chopped it all off. These things are just, you know, they're welling up in me. And when I, I don't know, Edie, when I see your story, I just, they just come fast and furious, these horrible memories of this woman that is supposed to be my mother who loves me. Right. It's all right. You're healing from that now. And again, these 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 stories are about the fortitude of the human spirit now i'll talk a little bit about the afterlife because your your biological mother is about to cross over in a in not too long how much longer can she be down here you never know with her mm. well either way it's not that long mm -hmm. it's a blink of an eye really and she's already in her 80s so uh, and although you haven't uh, had any uh, interaction really with her in about 10 years or so, mm -hmm. except for very uh, destructive, uh, you know, when she's able to get through, it's not good, right? Because she just doesn't, she doesn't get you, Lena, and she also doesn't get 
that she's still a bipolar person and still untreated and she's still it hasn't gotten better that doesn't get better mm -mm. it doesn't get better and it doesn't go away she's manic depressive bipolar that's all there can be said about my so was my mother this is the whole pride so was i my question is am i no you are not no you're not mm -hmm. you're not manic depressive and you're not bipolar the worst thing that can be said about you is you used to have mood swings you're the most normal person in your whole family. They all called you the crazy one. Lena's the most normal person in her family. Just a little bit more talented than the rest of them and extremely, extremely psychic and connected to some very special spirits like John and we out here. But no, you're not bipolar and you're not manic depressive. You you have every reason to be. <laughs> John, oh, well, you, you have every reason to have a lot more problems than you do, but you don't. So what I could say is now that, uh, you know, if you're wondering if you're going to have an, a relationship with your mother once she crosses over, the answer is not necessarily. See, that's the thing. People are like, oh, well, when we get to the other side, if you didn't really ever clear things up down here, you could be, I'm cordial with her now. Mm -hmm. I'm cordial with her when I see her. I don't spend a lot of time with the person who was Big Edie and, and you know what I mean? Right. I mean, it's not that important now. We've learned our lessons and we're down here. And the mo most important thing to me is that after sh after Big Edie died and crossed over, I jumped up on that stage. Yes, she did. This is a story of triumph. Yes. I jumped right up on that stage. I went to Greenwich Village, Lena, to the same clubs that you used to play in. And I had a little cabaret act. And I did my thing in 1978, as soon as my, less than nine months after Big Edie crossed over, I was up on that stage and it wasn't the great, I don't, hey, I did great and everyone loved me and I was very happy and that made my whole life worthwhile. Just those couple of years and then I retired to Florida. I was always very happy. I had a wonderful um, rapport with many friends and yes, lovers after the fact. And I did just fine. You know, luckily it didn't take you your entire life to break away. Uh, you know, but that the point is, don't worry about your biological mother. Get that picture again. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about her. Mm -hmm. She has her own fish to fry. And one of these days, she's going to learn how to fry him. And it's probably not going to be on this on this side, on the earthly side. She's probably going to have to come back down here again. You're not. All right. I speak from authority. And, John, I think I can. Yes, you absolutely can speak from authority, Edie. And a lot of people, a lot of children don't understand when they have uh, mentally ill parents. That's why I personally, John, I and my parents were mentally ill down here. Yes, right. Yeah, they were crazy. My mother was crazier than my father, but, you know, what can I say? So, uh, you know, now there, there really should be some kind of test that people take that uh, otherwise they're not allowed to have kids. But I guess that's not really possible. But I always said that that would be a wise thing to do. Right. Yes, it seems like it would be. Otherwise, you got this and then you got a one screwed up mangled kid. Hmm. But yeah, everything else is going great. Let's see what you got going here, Lena. All right. And yeah, I, again, I don't spend a lot of time with her. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. When I see her, I say hi, and she's fine. But it's not meant to be. We're not b big buddies. We're not twin flames or anything like that, if that's what you're thinking. Not, right, gotcha. Mm. Yeah, because Carrie Fisher and Debbie Reynolds are twin flames. Right. But uh, these mother and this mother and daughter was not. All right, so this is your uh, rune today. If you don't mind, I'll take it. Sure, Edie. Mm. The sun. Mm -hmm. The sun. Illumination. Happiness. Abounding. Second chances. Redemption. Karma coming around full circle and the divine completion of a cycle. The sun and also the son of God. Warmth. Love. The love of God. One thing I always had was the love of God. That would made me a very happy person. Mm -hmm. When everything else was going against me, don't don't get me wrong. 
uh, I had some down days, but I loved God and God loved me. And on my tombstone, I said so. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this could be even be said if this rune is very pertinent with regard to the completion of the cycle of the, uh, the election that's going on. Karma and redemption, good time. It's time for a change. It's time for a sea change, and it's happening. And Lena, you know about the sea. Yes, me and Edie are, are, are ocean. Yes, we're ocean girls. We love the water, and we love the sun and the sand. And we love stretching out our long limbs on the sun and the sand, don't we? Yes, we do. Mm. And you get a nice tan just like me, don't you? Yes, and so does John. Yeah, John gets a good tan. Yeah. So, uh, and those days are uh, not going to be for a little while. <laughs> right, winter's closed. It's all right. Eventually, you're going to uh, sh go to a, a warmer climate. John is going to be bringing you to a warmer climate. So get, get ready for that. That's, that's on the uh, horizon a bit. In the meantime, anything else you want to ask me? Mm, not really. Uh, I just want to talk and we'll, you know, uh, one last thing. You seem to be doing so much better, Lena, since you and John are, are not on the, right, not on the internet so much. Yep. You're doing like one day on, one day off, and one day cre for creative pursuits, and another day for writing, and this is working. And your energy is, believe it or not, it's affecting others as well. Mm. Your followers who uh, enjoy your posts, you're giving them a break. Because before it was kind of not, I'm not going to use, I'm not going to throw the word manic around. Mm -hmm. But people do get, <laughs> there is a mania about incessantly, compulsively checking the internet. That's one thing I am really glad that I didn't see that in my lifetime down here. Because I don't, I don't think I would have enjoyed it. You know, no, I don't think I would have enjoyed it. Because too many people would have been mean to me, I think. As many people that love you, there's always going to be people that are mean to you. And my, uh, I noticed your mother is not here at all today. Well, she's kind of sit, sit, sitting back because of a lifetime of her screaming over me. Right. Which your mother tried to do at every angle. And uh, had inappropriate, uh, you know, attractions to all of the men who loved you. Because she was jealous. Uh, this goes very deep. But anyway, a too thin-skinned, I wouldn't have been able to handle. Ah, it's coming up on 18. Wouldn't have been able to handle the internet. It wouldn't have been good for my mental health, especially being bipolar. But uh, that's all I really want to say. I'm glad that I avoided that. It would have been one more stressor in my life. And I think people down here are maybe finding that out. Hopefully your posts are going to be enlightening them with regard to, you know, cooling it with that and getting it onto your real life, you know. Mm. Right. <laughs> my real life. <laughs> He's right here. <laughs> I am. I am your real life. I know, honey. I know that. Well, we passed the 18 mark with little Edie Beal and big Edie Beal. Yes, I appreciate this so much. Let's see what else. Oh, and the more. And, 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 and this has been great fun. And, and uh, I just, I'm glad you had me in today because it was very informal but great fun. And I'll come back another time. And I noticed that when you had me in, all your kitties came in to, uh, yes, they did. All the kitties came in to have lunch in. <laughs> In honor of Edie Beale's visit today. Yes, I love you so. You're a sister in my spirit, always. And John, you know I love you too. I love you too. And we'll always have the Maisels in common. You will always have the Maisels in common. Those marvelous Maisels. All right, John, I love you. This was really nice and informal and informative. And I'm, I hope the camera work wasn't too shaky, folks. It's all right. You did great. All right. Love you all people out there. I love you, Lena. I love you too. And we love you, Beals and Mazels and Beatles. And that's it. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.